is here with magnetism. This is lesson one, and it's practical demonstration with magnets. So let's have a look at the objectives. The objectives are to demonstrate lines of magnetic force using iron dust, or what you might know as iron filings. Demonstrate that the lines of force are concentrated through magnets and magnetic materials. Demonstrate the lines of magnetic force are not affected by non-magnetic materials. We're going to show the effect of how magnets interact, or how their fields actually interact with each other. And we're going to demonstrate permeability and how that applies to screening. So the way we're going to do that is reasonably straightforward. But first, we've got to do a risk assessment. Whenever we do practice, we have to do risk assessments. So in this particular case, the has its eye identified with iron dust, so I'm going to use a face mask to mitigate that. Um, I have to do lots of high and low lifting because I have to shoot this with a camera on, on the floor, so lots of up and down lifting, so keeping knees bent and back straight, and be careful of trips and falls with leads and furniture, things of the like. So we're going to do 12 reasonably simple, straightforward experiments with magnets. Number one, we're going to look at the field around a simple bar magnet, then a horseshoe magnet. Then we're going to look at how opposed north and south poles on different magnets work. Then we're going to use uh, north to north magnets for number four. Number five, we're going to parallel up some magnets with opposed poles. Then number six, parallel magnets and parallel the poles. Then number seven, we're going to kind of put T magnets in a T arrangement and look at the way the fields interact. The same with the uh, the Y, or the letter Y shape. Then we're going to put three magnets in parallel and look at how the fields interact. Then we're going to look at uh, parallel lines of flux through soft iron, magnet and brass. And then 11 and 12, we're going to look at magnetic fields through a steel ring and through a brass ring. So this is how we do it. We've got a bar magnet, you can see there, just sitting on a nice piece of white paper to show a bit of contrast. I'm simply going to put a piece of tracing paper over the top and then sprinkle the iron dust on the top, which will make the lines of flux reasonably obvious or the lines of magnetic force. So here's the first one, and you can see the lines of magnetic force running from north to south. So here's our north end, here's our south end, if you didn't pick it up in the previous drawing. You can see strong fields internally here inside the magnet. Then as the fields get out into the air or to the atmosphere, they become a little weaker. And as we stretch them a bit further and further, they become weaker again as the fields radiate out from the magnet. So they're strong internally, but through the air, permeability of air is very low. And the magnetic fields get weaker as they travel through the air. You can see here at the North Pole and the South Pole, they're very dense. The magnetic fields are very, very dense and very, very tight. Another thing that you probably can't see too well is that those dense areas are actually sitting up about, they're sitting up about 10 or 15 millimeters high. Those iron filings. So if I was to draw this in section looking side on, we've actually got a magnetic field that is this shape. It's actually three-dimensional, so it's not sitting flat. It's actually more like a donut, and the field is rotating out of the ends of the poles like this. So the magnetic fields are rotating coming or emanating from the magnet like that. So they're not only moving sideways, they're also moving vertically through the air. Our next magnet is the uh, horseshoe magnet. And again, very, very similar, except now we've got our north and south poles kind of um, adjacent to each other, side by side. So here's the magnetic field. And the first thing to note 
is very strong between the poles. You can see this, these fields, straight lines, there's no bend in them, they're very strong. And then we have these weaker fields, as we can see them, coming out here. And then eventually, the fields start to deviate off out here. And we start to get this kind of effect from our horseshoe magnet. And eventually, the magnet starts to do this as well around the back of the magnet. But for now, the strongest part of the magnet is this part where the two poles are adjacent to each other. So that's the important part of a horseshoe magnet. Our next magnet is going to be just two bar magnets, but uh, north and south facing each other. So let's have a look at this one. And again, if we've got two poles that are opposite, they're going to want to attract or the fields are going to want to combine. And you can see that happening here. Very strong combination of the fields here. And you can see the flux lines here between the two magnets. Quite strong and obvious and then as the fields radiate you could see them going down the magnet itself as they radiate back to the north to the south or the south to the north depending which way they're going so the thing I wanted you to pick up here is these two fields are strengthened they are combined and guess what? They want to pull each other in. They want to attract. So these two fields are combining and they wish to attract to each other. So here we have the same experiment again, but exact obvious. We've got uh, north to north now. So we would expect to see some kind of repelling action happen. And sure enough, that's exactly what we see here. So our fields are very much pushing away. You can see they're not nice oval shape anymore. They're more this pushed away, sharp, distorted kind of effect. And you can see this one here. Very sharp, pushed away effect. fields are really wanting to push away from each other. So in this case, the two fields are wanting to push away from each other. There's a clear repulsion or repelling of the fields with north to north. So this like poles repel each other, similar poles attract or the fields want to combine together. Five now, we've got two parallel magnets, but we've got dissimilar poles beside each other. So we're going to expect to see a bit of attraction here or the fields wanting to combine. And sure enough, we've got fields combining together. Let me turn the pointer on and straight away, we can see these fields across here and here as we've got a north and a south very strong combining fields. The fields are wanting to attract to each other. So we have this force wanting to combine and attract. So similarly on this end, both ends are wanting to combine. So we have this force of attraction at work with the two fields see this also happening here in the center. The two fields are just wanting to combine with each other all the way down between the magnets. Number six, same experiment now, but we've got north aligned with north and south aligned with south. So same experiment, but the opposite obviously will hopefully happen. So let's have a look. 
Sure enough, we've got lots and lots of repulsive fields here. They're pushing away from each other. So you can see the fields out here nice and strong, taking care of themselves. But these fields here, look at this, pushed right out here. Those fields want to go all the way back around here. So these fields are being pushed right out, right the way around to here. So you can see those fields wanting to come around. So we've got lots and lots of push back in these directions. So lots of push back. And same here. The two fields don't want to react. One's wanting to push that way, the other one's wanting to push this way. So we're getting clear repulsive fields between the two. In the previous one, we got lots of connections in this direction of fields wanting to combine. But here, they're all parallel. Right, so clearly they want to push each other away from one and other. Here we've got uh, the T magnets arrangement and again this is going to be a combination of attraction and a combination of repulsion. So here we're going to get some kind of repulsive field between these two but we're going to get some kind of attractive arrangement between these two. So let's have a look at what the magnetic fields look like. And we certainly can see some repulsion and some attraction happening here. So let's have a quick look at the repulsion to start with. If I draw a line roughly through there, you can see the magnetic field here being distorted and very much pushed down and flattened off as it comes through here. The same with this field. You can see it's being turned and pushed out here. Turned and pushed out. Fields normal across the top here, pretty normal. We're getting a normal field here. So very strong push. So we'll draw some arrows on here to indicate we're getting a repulsive field across there. But across here we're getting very strong attraction. Very strong attraction across here. And you can see the magnetic fields wanting to combine quite well out here. And in here you can see the all those fields wanting to attract to each other. So here we clearly have an attraction happening. And then on the back of this magnet, we've got its ordinary magnetic field here. So we've got a repulsion line and an attraction line in this T arrangement. Our next one is the Y. And again, we're going to end up with a similar kind of arrangement. We're going to want to obviously going to get some repulsion here but we're going to get some attraction here and here so attraction north to south propulsion north to north so here's our magnetic fields so let's deal with the attractions first so we can clearly see our fields attracting each other across here and across here. Strong attractive fields across here. But these fields, they're interacting but they're pushing each other away. You can see the fields kind of distorting as they push each other apart the lines go up through here. So we've clearly got 
propulsion across this way and plenty of attraction we can still see the attraction here and here the fields wanting to combine together that's what causes the attraction the fields wanting to combine up with each other on this one we've got uh, a north north south and on the bottom we've got a south south north so we're going to see some repulsion and attraction again so obviously in here we would expect to see some repulsion but here we're going to want to see they're going to want to attract to each other aren't they so again we're going to get some attraction here but here with south to south we're going to get repulsion so let's look at our overlay and see if we can see that happening so let's start uh, here where we have a north and a north and you can see we've certainly got a line of repulsion here these lines of flux deeping out in these directions and the fields are clearly repelling each other same down through here the lines are going wide in this direction so again we're repulsing at this end as well so lines of repulsion and repulsion here and here quite the opposite now over here you can see we've got lots and lots of lines of the fields interconnecting with each other lots and lots and lots so it's happening at both ends very clearly lots and lots of magnetic field joining together so here we have the exact opposite the two fields are wanting to combine so this one wants to be attracted to that one and that one wants to be attracted to this one and you can just see lots and lots of field lines doing that so again definitely demonstrating to us that like poles repel and dislike poles or opposite poles attract so here we have a piece of steel a magnet and a piece of brass so we're going to expect to see a lot of magnetic field sucked into the steel and the magnetic field will just pass normally through the brass is what we're kind of going to expect so let's have a close look at our iron dust and sure enough we've got all this magnetic field going over into the steel so lots and lots of magnetic field being attracted or conducted through the steel on this side and you can see the flux around the outside that isn't being attracted through the steel but on this side on the right hand side it's business as normal the magnetic field is just operating as normal as though there's absolutely nothing there for the magnetic field to be conducted through so you can see our brass underneath it's having basically no effect on the magnetic field so the magnetic field is clearly being conducted into the steel but it's not being conducted into the brass the brass is having no effect on the operation of the magnetic field next we have a steel ring and we have a north south pole opposite the steel ring so again we would expect the steel ring to pick up the magnetic field and conduct it so we would expect our lines of flux to kind of do this 
through magnetic ring. So let's put our um, tracing paper over the top with our filings dust and <clears throat> let's have a look at what's happened. So clearly we've got lots and lots of lines of flux from the magnet to the steel. You can see those very clear magnetic lines of flux to the rings of steel. They're being conducted around inside the magnetic ring or the steel ring and basically the inside is being shielded. So we can see our magnetic flux, plenty of it going around the outside and then around the outside here as the two fields combine outside the steel ring. A lot of the magnetic field is going inside the steel ring obviously and then a little bit of the field outside of the back of the magnets going back to their respective poles. So this area inside there's no magnetic field and it's said to be shielded. So that's shielded. And that's what happens when we use steel conduit and we put a data cable here inside the steel conduit and we are shielding it from magnetic fields. Next we have the brass ring and again it being brass it shouldn't conduct any of the magnetic field. So what are we going to expect to see? I would expect to see magnetic field running straight through here and the two fields of course wanting to combine. So let's move on to our final slide and sure enough here we have our brass ring and it's having no effect on the magnetic field whatsoever. Lots and lots and lots of magnetic field straight through from north to south and the brass ring is having no effect on our magnetic field. The magnetic fields are just combining as we would expect them to do because we have the dissimilar ends of the poles Therefore, effectively, our two magnets are combining their fields together. And you can see the fields running down the backs of the magnets. But it's quite clear that we've got a very, very strong field through here. So what are our objectives? We've got, we had to show that lines of magnetic force um, using iron dust. So we did the iron dust clearly indicated that the lines of force are between north to south poles externally and the opposite internally. So they go south to north internally. The lines of magnetic force never crossed despite my sketching that sometimes crossed them but they weren't meant to. And the lines of force are densest at the pole. So they're strongest at the pole ends. We had to show that the lines of force are concentrated through magnetic materials and we saw the magnetic fields prefer to travel through magnetic materials like iron or steel and this is the path of least resistance it's called. We also had to show that lines of magnetic force are not affected by non-magnetic materials and our example was brass so we had non-magnetic materials like brass, paper, the paper, the cardboard we were using have no effect on magnetic fields, but the dust that we used did, of course. The fields are not distorted or concentrated by these materials. We had to show the effect of how magnets interact with other magnets, so we did that in a few different ways. We had uh, like magnetic fields repel or push each other away. That is a north to a north or a south to a south. And opposite magnetic fields combine or attract to each other. That is a north to a south or a south to a north. We had to demonstrate or show permeability and how it applies to screening. So magnet conducting material such as steel can deviate the magnetic field around an object because of its permeability. 
the result is magnetic screening. So that brings us to the end of magnetism prac number one. I hope you've enjoyed seeing and learning a little bit about how magnetic fields interact.